what's going on everyone justin again as always thanks for watching my channel welcome back happy tgif to those of you that have your beers i am personally right now in route to the used tool store you guys asked for it i'm gonna give it to you i had a medical appointment down in uh, palm desert so it was kind of a short day at work i'm making my way back into town we got an hour left before they close i'm really excited to be able to show you guys what's going on in the store i'm curious to see what he's had in the store because i haven't been there in a few years and uh yeah so stay tuned it's coming also for those of you that are working out like fanatics like me it's flex friday baby Grr, get it hope you get it it's leg day for me so i gotta hit that afterwards but i'll see you guys in the All store right. you guys have asked for it here we are let's go check this place out All right oh cool good afternoon i haven't been in here in a while i wanted to come check it out it's been a very long time i see you're only open a few days a week now yes sir how's things man how's business uh, now yeah, you always had some really cool stuff in here I got a little video vlog that I do on YouTube. So if you see me walking around with a camera, don't mind me. My fellow followers really wanted to see this. And I have a handful actually that live here in Yucca Valley. Oh, there you, go. you don't mind being on camera, do you? Doesn't matter. Hi, I'm Justin. I'm Star. Star, nice to meet you. Yeah, it's been a little while, man. How long you guys had this store, if you don't mind my asking? Uh, we've been here in October. will be 10 years now. Oh, wow. That's great. I was like, I know that I came in here about three years back. You helped me out with some craftsman stuff. You were telling me about the Americanized, um, with the USA imprint and how you can tell. I yeah. forgot how that works. Would you mind showing me that again? Because I was, I'm short a couple of sockets. Well, there, there's, craftsman has gone through, you know, so many different transitions in there. You know, they, they've got the, 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 the double initials on the, the their you know, is supposed to tell what era the socket came from or okay. the, the tool, you know, and, and that particular run of tools, if you will. And they had, you know, a lot of people like the Flying V, you know, which is, you know, mid 60s. Okay. Is that kind of like on the Chevy cylinder heads where they had uh, the double hump, double humpers, Christmas trees? Some Something okay. like that, yeah. Yeah. You know, oh, that's cool. And so you said there's a there's an actual V on the socket or a, a oh, notch. Yeah. Yeah? yeah. Do you have anything like that? I'm sure I do. I just got to fish around. Yeah. It'd be cool to see. Well, good to see you again, man. First one I picked up is the. All right, on. Ticky tone. Let's check this out. It's got to. Oh wow! And this is from the seventies, then. This is probably from the sixties. Oh, sixties. I mean, it's a old school. Yeah, I mean there there are websites dedicated to you know Craftsman. looking them up. You know what what brand, what era, what area, you know. And somebody even told me that whenever you find that, uh, it also tells you what plant that they they were made in. I don't know for sure, but... Oh, that's wild. Yeah. How much you selling that pump for there on the wall? I'd look pretty cool in the house. I've got 35 on it, but I'm open to... to Negotiation? Offer. I like it. <laughs> I might, uh, that'll be on my wish list as I go through your store. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Star, for all the helpful information about the Craftsman Sockets. Do you usually people come in here and fish through these and probably pull out all the snap on and matco and stuff like that? I'm sure pretty quick, they, huh? They, they try to, but uh, anything out there is going to be, uh, I refer to it as off. Taiwanese or Taiwanese? Taiwan, they're foreign stuff. And, gotcha. Yeah, you know, I've got a lot of people that, you know, come in and they'll buy them, you know, if they're going to modify something to, to fit it. You know, or I've got a lot of people that come in from Joshua Tree, and I've never seen anything that they've made, but they, you know, buy the, 
the, the junky tools for art projects. Okay. And do you sell them like by the pound or just individual priced? They're, they're individual priced unless you tell me that you want to make you know something and we'll make a package deal if someone was just getting one socket like a buck two bucks or how's that work um you know if you're getting you know the the sockets out there you know they're usually a buck or two you know back here the small ones are are two bucks and then it's two four and six okay you know so all Fair. the way up to i think i've got 26 millimeter Fair so enough. they're pretty good size so they're six dollars sweet well, thank you for the info. All right, let's check some of this stuff out. Yeah, whole socket set, 30 bucks. Some smaller ones, 15. So if you guys are trying to get a, a setup going at the house and you just don't have anything, this is definitely the place to get it. And like you guys know, I've been going through a tough time. So... Good. trying to have sockets of anything at the house this is the way that i'm most likely going to go with it to be honest because i mean look at this almost a full three-eighths set and quarter inch or i'm sorry three-eighths but in metric and an sae 12 point 15 bucks a set it's 30 bucks that's a pretty good deal in my in my thought process so that's cool <clears throat> got some speed ratchets here Another little socket set. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Extensions are a must. Get some old school torque wrenches. Look at this. Keep that in mind. Old school. Individual wrenches. If you were just missing one. Screwdriver set. Yeah. Nut drivers. <clears throat> These long reach vice grips, those are cool. Oh, this would be cool. Look at this. Pick and scraper set. Six bucks. Pry bar set. Twelve bucks. Again, if you guys are like a lube tech and you're just starting off save yourself as much money as you can as soon as you can don't have to get everything new a place like this is a great place to start i mean even when it comes down to like pneumatic or cordless you got a lot of options here air guns okay, even the, you guys like that matco vacuum check it out there's one right here it's not a matco but it'll work Vice, air hose, chop saws, bird houses, look at this, separate the frame, like subframe, be able to spread the frame open so you could put that cross member in, floor jack, Look, even spray paint. You doing projects? Yep. Look at that. Think about the cost of inflation right now, how much everything costs, and how much you could save by coming to a place like this. It's even got stuff for the inside of the house. So it's not just automotive mechanic stuff or construction stuff. You have many options here. Even got old school DVDs if you got a DVD player. Toolboxes, service carts. Well, this old school craftsman box right here. You know, if you wanted to set something up for yourself. I like it. Cabinets. Look at this. Power outlet. Stools. Sanding wheels, cut off wheels, and, you know, it's, I, I Slim Jims. So, like I said, guys, wonderful store to come into. If you're just looking for a few things that's going to help you out, save you a few bucks, 
get you at least started somewhere in the right direction. You know what I mean? It doesn't have to come super, super expensive. Look, I've lived my life the cheap way. I lived it the extravagant way. There are certain things that I've done in my life that caused me to have to go all the way back to the beginning and it happens. Things happen, right? It's a building process. Tools. Life. Win some, lose some. Easy come, easy go. All right. Well, I think for today, just because I want to thank you very much for giving me your time and participation in our video and letting us walk around your store. Would you do $25 for the gas pump? Perfect. You take card? Yep. Awesome. Right. Well, Mr. Star, appreciate right. it. Good doing business with you. Thank you for joining us on the vlog. And uh, I hope to see you in the chats later. All right. All right. Okay. See you. Thank you. Have a good one. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. And we'll see you guys back at the house for your beer and bullshit. Ah, see? I think it looks pretty good right there on the wall. Right next to our J. Young Snap-on Tools mirror that we got from him from a while back. And all the pictures of our cars. Matco clock. Our Route 66. Oh, that looks cool. All right, all right, all right. So back at the Casa, we did find a place to hang the fuel pump. Um, so that's cool. Word in the burbs says they're getting ready to increase the rent on us by like 300 bucks a month. Uh, there's been other people that said, well, by law, they can only raise it by like 10%. It's not too far off. Um, but no, pretty much at the end of the day, these rental property places, they do what they want. We just had a family next door. Their rent was $1,250. They tried to increase it to $1,700. That family moved out. The other guy next door, his got bumped to $1,600. Other guy was told $1,700, but then they ended up, I guess, coming to some kind of an agreement for another six month lease at like 15 or something like that. So I have no idea exactly how much because right now i'm in a lease for at least the next two months but once the two months is over they're already looking for an increase in the rent <clears throat> that throws another wrench into the mix and the hits just keep on coming no matter how much you try to catch up you know you walk two steps forward you're taking 10 steps back and it's like i just can't seem to get ahead i'm i'm trying to I'm, I'm making it but it's it's not it's not working out too well so something that rings in my head is like oh you can't afford the luxury of your own lifestyle i don't really have that luxurious of a lifestyle okay to be honest um i've got a two bedroom two bath place that i share with two of my daughters and basically a single car garage I've pretty much sold everything that I possibly could sell um, and still being able to make, do my job as a mechanic. The toolbox thing wasn't working out very well. Um, I wasn't getting any hits at even a fraction of what I paid for it. So instead of going all the way backwards and again, starting in a service car, I just took it down because I got to a certain point where I was like, I'm not going any less than that. And after it being up there for the last four months or three months now, I think it's been like three months, I was just like, okay, I've got to figure something else out because I didn't even get not one save. I didn't even get one reply. I only had one person that was interested, but once they heard how much, they were like, nope. And then they wanted to trade me some beater car for it. And I was like, no, nah. nope, not going to do that. Which means other things got to go. And that depends on how much the rent goes up. <sighs> I've got other bills that are weighing me down pretty hardcore right now uh that i've got to figure out what to do look sometimes you got to start over okay i'm not afraid of that i just don't want to be back in the gutter okay i was homeless once before i'm not doing that again um you know my my daughter deserves the best life that she could possibly get my stepdaughter too my newborn son i'm trying to provide it and perception is so skewed from from different people's opinions about me or whatever you can think about whatever you want to think about the fact of the matter is, is that uh, uh there's nothing i wouldn't do for my children to even set aside selfish desires that obviously i don't need i'm not sitting here getting hammered every night okay 
I might have a couple of beers after work or whatever, but if I have responsibilities and things that I got to accomplish and achieve, then obviously I'm not drinking, okay? My kids play sports. I take them to the sports. We're there for a couple hours. Uh, we get home, it's relatively close, 7.30, 8 o'clock uh, before I even think about even having a beer and then I'm making dinner, you know? Kids bed down at around 9.30. By the time they're all sleepy sleep, I might throw back a few more just to go to sleep too. Uh, but I'm not doing anything wildish and crazy. You guys, some of you guys remember me from over two years ago when I had a spouse that was in the house that didn't drink and I was able to crush, you know, 18 to 24 packs with you guys on a live stream. Stay up from four to eight hours at a time doing live streams on Fridays because I didn't have to work on a Saturday. I work at the shop over the weekends. So there's been a handful of weekends now where I just cannot sit down and do live streams. Some of it had to do with sports. We had to wake up super early to do sports because my daughter was in soccer. Uh, and then there the last couple of weekends, I've basically been working over at the shop. So there's other jobs that come in for me to try to make money. I'm trying to hustle and bustle and do everything that I can. Plus, I've been going to the gym pretty regularly, like every day for the most part for two weeks. I think I took a rest day last week. Uh, I took a rest day this week. I was thinking about going and killing legs tonight, but uh, I ended up saying, you know what? I just did a whole body workout yesterday plus cardio and I'm still sore. I'm like rebuilding myself, right? I'm structurizing myself. My diet has changed. Uh, I've actually been eating pretty lean for the last three months now. Pretty much vegetables, meat, high protein stuff. Not intentionally. That's just what my body's been craving due to the summer weather. I've been drinking a lot of water and there's been a couple of nights that I just don't drink at all. I'm too busy doing shit and I just don't have it in me. By the time it's time to get ready to get showered and go to bed, that's what I do. I get showered and I go to bed. So the perception that like, because I crack a beer open with you guys on camera and do a video that I'm sitting here getting smashed, not true, okay? Another thing too is I might even do it for showmanship because you guys are used to me saying, cheers to those of you who have your beers. I might crack the can and take like a sip. Notice that since I've taken a sip with you guys, I haven't really drank it. So there are some videos that I'll just take a sip and then I'll put it in the fridge and sometimes I'll forget about it and I'm just back with the rest of my day. You know, I got a house to clean. I got to prepare food and get things ready for the kids. There's a whole bunch of behind the camera things that you guys don't even see. So perception's everything. I, I can't make somebody uh, believe whatever they want to believe and I have a lifestyle that I have and this is how I choose to live my lifestyle, you know? I'm more focused on food and everything else. Someone said, well, if you kick the booze and you kick the cigarettes, you'd be surprised how much money you save. I actually know roughly how much money I actually spend on beer and how much I spend on cigarettes. Roughly right now, I probably spend maybe $15, 20 bucks tops a week, but really it's almost been every other week for the last month because I haven't really been able to afford it. I've been trying to pay other things. Cigarette wise, yeah, it's been an up and down roller coaster. I went almost two weeks without, then I kind of started smoking again. I'm not smoking through a pack a day, so I'm not spending, what'd you guys say, 10, uh, 10 to $12 a day. My cigarettes cost me $9 where I go. It's like $9.50. Okay, it's still 10 bucks roughly, right? I'll give you that, but it's not per day. I can make a pack last me three days, okay? On a really bad and really stressful day, uh, I might smoke like half a pack or three quarters of a pack but I'm not buying them every single day. That's my takeaway. Same thing with energy drinks. I, I like energy drinks, but I don't buy them every day. I'll go get like a three for $7 and that's it for the week. I don't buy them anymore. I drink a lot of water, like I said, and I've been going to the gym and I've been working out. You're gonna change. Your, your environment will change and the habits that you have will change with your environment. Meaning that like, obviously I have a different direction that I'm going. I've, I've got kids I gotta take care of. I'm by myself in 20 years of, always having a companion to share bills with. I, for the first time in the last four months, have been pretty much having to do this all on my own. The first two months were really rough. The third month got a little bit easier. This fourth month has been a mother F. It totally has. So many unexpected things popped up, boom, 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 right away, and I was not expecting it. I wasn't expecting a $1,200 cell phone bill. I wasn't expecting my neighbors telling me that they're raising rent here in the next couple months for me. For them, they already raised the rent. I'm like, there's a lot of unexpected things that just keep on popping up. And I'm like, okay, I don't really have much left. There's nothing in this garage hardly anymore. Things gotta go. 
Things got to go. What's going to go? I don't know. It really depends on how much I'm going to come up with. Maybe it all has to go, except for whatever it is I have inside this house. All I'm trying to do is maintain what it is that I have because I want to maintain a healthy environment for my children. And I want to make sure they have a place to call home and feel comfortable in. So comfortable. In fact, my stepdaughter practically lives with me full time. Okay. She, she goes away on the weekends. She goes and stays at her friend's house or with her mom and stuff like that. So I love my girls to death. I'm taking care of them the best I can. I'm trying to get my, my feet forward, but there's always these hurdles and things that I have to overcome and cross. I don't blame anybody except for myself, okay? It has been all me this whole time, but I can't live my life with the what if, okay? What if I never left Ron's Automotive? What if I never committed adultery and left my wife? Where would I be today? Probably where I was two years ago. I'd probably be making six figures a year. We'd probably be at over 100,000 subscribers. I'd probably be going to SEMA and going to shows. We'd probably be getting more things in regularly from Harbor Freight. Okay, I can't live my life with the what ifs. All I can do is focus on the now. What can I do now to improve my situation? What can I do now going forward to make life easier for a single parent that still pays child support? I get it. I've made my bed, I'm laying in it, and maybe I am getting what I deserve. But you know what? Shh, things happen. How are you gonna act? How are you gonna respond when these things happen? I had my moment of self-destruction. There's no doubt about that. Childish, whatever you wanna call it. I don't handle depression very well. I actually have medication from the VA for anxiety and depression that I've been taking and it has helped a little bit, not a lot, but it has helped a little bit. The gym has actually helped me a lot more, but it wasn't until I started going back that I started noticing that change about myself, which is why I go every single day now. I go at least one hour a day, every single day during the week, like I said, except for my rest day. And then in the weekend, I'll go and I'll hit the gym three times. I'll hit it in the morning, I'll hit it in the afternoon and I'll hit it at uh, dinner time. And that's just how I've been doing it. I'm, I'm so filled with anxiety, stress, and anger that right now, that's my outlet. That's my healthier option. That's what I choose to do. But again, just want to let you guys know, perception's everything, okay? It, look, yes, I had a good life. I've been poor, broke. I've been homeless. I've been what I felt was like a pretty rich lifestyle for the most part and had pretty much everything. And I screwed it all up and here I am reaping what I sow, okay? I get it. These are decisions. We make tough decisions sometimes. This last relationship was a tough decision and I'm still trying to find my ground. I'm still trying to build a foundation. I'm trying to make a better life. These are choices that I've made. Now I'm, now I'm doing what I need to do to get my crap together, okay? I had my moment of weakness and self-destruction. Now I'm in the rebuilding phase. I'm trying to build a healthier, better lifestyle going forward. So that's all I got for this video. Look, I know it is a kind of a weird way to end this video. I hope you guys like the first half of going into the used tool store. Let me know what you want to see next. I'm thinking we'll probably go to Home Depot or we may go into Tractor Supply. If there's some Harbor Freight tools that you guys have questions about that you would like to discuss, you want a top 10 list or 20, let me know down in the comments. I appreciate you guys. Hopefully we'll do a little hangout here in a little while because we haven't done one in a few weeks. I miss doing TGIS with you guys, but like I said, my lifestyle has changed, so I'm not doing it all the time. I just don't have time or room and energy for it, but I will try to do this tonight because I know it's been a month. I've missed hanging out with you guys too, and we'll talk to you here pretty soon. Cheers. This is...